Well, good afternoon, and I'm Denise from the Niobrara County Extension Office in Lusk, Wyoming. And today we're going to talk about um, versatile cooking in a skillet and some creative skillet meals that you can cook in a short amount of time and have a delicious and nutritious meal in a matter of minutes. So first off, a skillet is probably the most versatile piece of equipment you can have in your kitchen. They come in a wide array of sizes and made from a wide array of different materials. So when you go out to buy a skillet, you wanna buy the best one that you can afford because if you take care of it, you will have a skillet for your, in, that skillet for your entire life. So um, when you're cooking for a family or larger um, gatherings, you may want a bigger skillet. This is a 12 inch skillet. And, um, but if you're cooking for less than a family or a large crowd, you may want a smaller skillet like this one. So you need to kind of determine what size of group of people you're gonna be cooking for, and then buy a skillet according to fit those. Um, the bigger the skillets, we have bigger ones than these. I have a bigger one than this at home. Um, and we have a lot of bigger ones here at the extension office. You just have to know that those are a lot harder to store. You need a pretty big cupboard to get that big old skillet in there. But if you're cooking for even a larger group, um, those big skillets or you're frying chicken, something like that, that takes a big amount of space, they are invaluable. So there's lots of um, materials that skillets are made out of. Our first one is a stainless steel um, skillet. This one's really versatile. As you can see, it has a metal handle. So it could be used on top of the stove or in the oven. Um, it is really durable. It's easy to clean and it doesn't react with acid foods. Like if you're cooking a tomato based meal with like a aluminum skillet, sometimes that reacts with your foods and gives it kind of an off flavor. So you want to buy a skillet and you can look on the label or on the box. You want it to have either a copper or stainless or aluminum bottom. And this one does, and it's called a clad bottom. So the copper is inside this bottom piece of um, stainless steel. You want that because it cooks more evenly with either a copper or aluminum bottom, and um, it's still safe to use in the oven. Our second type of skillet is a cast iron skillet. These are super duper heavy. This is a really little one, and they go on up in size from this. These also can be used on the stovetop or in your oven but they need a little extra care because you need to season them. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. This is, can be reactive to um, certain acidic foods. So you may get a more metallic flavor and um, they may turn to a darker color. So you may want to avoid a cast iron skillet if you're cooking tomato based products. This is a Teflon skillet. It is lined with um, no stick um, material, so it's really easy to clean. Um, it also can be used in the oven or on the stovetop because of its metal handle. And it does um, have a, um, what do I wanna say, aluminum bottom that's in the, in the bottom of the skillet. It also comes with a lid, which makes it even more versatile because you can um, cook things that say you're making a skillet meal with macaroni. You can put your macaroni in 
um, raw and it will cook it with this lid on holding the moisture in there. So it makes it much more versatile. The one thing that you need to watch out with Teflon or other non-stick coatings is they can easily be scratched with like a metal spoon, a metal spatula. So you want to always use either rubber or acrylic or wooden spoons that will not scratch your finish. The last type of skillet, and this is kind of a luxury. If you can have one, they're, they're really great. But if you can only afford one skillet and you only have room to store one skillet, then purchase one of these and this can be kind of the luxury item that maybe you put on your wish list. This is an electric skillet and as you can see it has an electrical cord. Um, the one advantage to this is it is, and I don't know if you can see that, it actually has temperature markings on it so you can easily control the temperature. Sometimes controlling the temperature on a burner is um, a little harder. So this will control your temperature much better. It's also a, a skillet that you can cook and serve in. So this one is Teflon lined and um, Again, you would need to use your utensils like this to cook in here. The one thing with an electric skillet, you cannot submerge it in water. Once you do, it's pretty well done. So you need to wash it with this out of the water, the electrical hookup, and, and dry it immediately. So there are some skillet tips that you'll um, want to always follow is always let your skillet cool completely before you go to wash it. If you submerge this in water hot or just set it in the sink and run water in it, it could cause the skillet bottom to warp and then it won't heat properly because it needs to set flat on your burner. The other thing is you never want to put your skillets in a dishwasher. Always hand wash them with um, dish soap and a, like a soft dish rag in the, your acrylic or in your Teflon or no stick coated skillets. And if you have something burned on like a skillet like this, once it is cooled, then you can soak it in some dishwater and usually the dried on or burned on food will come immediately off. So to season a cast iron skillet, if you have one or a cast iron Dutch oven, how you do it is you heat your oven to 350 degrees. You then pour a tablespoon of vegetable oil into your cast iron skillet. And with a paper towel, just wipe that oil around the entire interior of your cast iron skillet. You don't want any oil, like a puddle of oil, left in there. You then put that skillet in at the 350 degree oven and let it bake for, 30, for an hour. At the end of that hour, you turn the oven off, you let it set in there till your oven cools down completely, and then you take it out and you are um, ready to go. And I did leave out one step when you do this, quickly heat it up on the stove top and make sure you've got it all covered before you put it in the oven. Then put it in your 350 degree oven for an hour, then let the oven be turned off, cool down till this is completely cool. Um, to maintain that seasoning, you lightly wash the skillet and dry it immediately. And then you periodically just need to rub that with um, your vegetable oil again and um, put it on the stove and let it heat up again. So once you have it seasoned in the oven, if you take really good care of it 
and periodically do it on top of your stove top to keep the oil in it, you'll be able to cook on a cast iron skillet forever. This cast iron skillet belonged to my grandmother and we still use it. So it's probably 60, 70 years old. So they last forever. Um, the one thing like all metallic or metal cookware, be careful that you don't drop it on the floor. Um, it will bend or, and once it kind of bends and if it bends the bottom, they are pretty um, worthless because they do need to set flat on your stovetop. So if you're buying um, like skillets at a garage sale or at the thrift store, kind of make sure you set them on something flat, make sure their bottoms are still nice and flat and then they'll be good to go. So there are several skillet cooking methods. One is sauteing and probably you have all heard of sauteed mushrooms, that kind of thing. Usually we think of sauteing with vegetables and that means to quickly cook in a small amount of oil. So a lot of recipes call for sauteed onions or sauteed celery and onions, sauteed mushrooms. So you put just a little dab of oil in your skillet and put your vegetables in and quickly um, brown those all the while while you're stirring so that they don't get burned. To stir fry is you put a small amount of fat in and that's Usually we have meat, vegetables, um, some sort of liquid, and you're continually stirring those to keep them um, turning over so that they brown evenly. To braise, you're gonna put a small amount of liquid in your, um, in your skillet after you have browned, say a pork chop or a piece of meat put it in there to braise, you've browned it, then you put a little bit of liquid in it and you cover the skillet with its lid and let it cook. And finally to pan broil is like just kind of frying a piece of meat in your skillet without any added liquid and you do it pretty darn quick. So that's kind of um, skillet basics. If you have any questions about skillets, um, once your Teflon coating starts to wear away, you should probably um, discard that skillet and, and get a replacement. So if you're really careful, um, they will last forever if you use the right utensils. So today we're gonna um, talk about a really quick skillet meal. And most skillet meals are one dish meals. And later on in our series, we're gonna talk about um, stir fries and, and show you how to do a really quick stir fry. So today for something different, we are gonna cook in the electric skillet and show you how easy one is to use. Get it plugged in. And we're gonna turn it up to about 350 degrees. It doesn't take long for an electric skillet to heat up. So the base of our skillet meal today is um, going to be hamburger. And I thawed this in the microwave right before we began. So thawing in the microwave is, is a great way to get um, meat from a frozen state to a cookable state in a very short amount of time. It took about, in our microwave here, about three, three and a half minutes to um, get it thawed. The one trick with thawing in a microwave, you have to use that meat immediately because the microwave has already started the cooking process, so you can't thaw it in the microwave and then decide, oh, I really didn't want to eat that or something else occurs and you think, oh, I'm not gonna cook that tonight. Well, you do need to at least get the hamburger cooked even if you don't use, um, use it to complete 
your meal that night. You can put your cooked hamburger in the refrigerator, but not the microwave thawed hamburger. So we'll get this browned. And this is a really quick and easy recipe that you can make. You get home and you don't feel like cooking supper tonight. This will take hardly any time and it's all ingredients that probably most of us have on hand. And all microwaves cook differently. Um, this one cooks so much faster than mine does at home that I always get the edges kind of too done. Um, so you need to kind of know your microwave and how long it's going to take to do a certain job. So later on in the series of classes we're going to be doing is some oven cooking, slow cooker cooking, microwave cooking. So, and that is the one. Um, we have two microwaves here at the fairgrounds and they cook entirely different. And we live um, out of town, and so our electrical power is not near as strong as the power in town. So it kind of also depends on where you live, how, how powerful your microwave is. Make, learning to make skillet meals, again, you can um, use your imagination use your creativity and come up with um, lots of different combinations of foods that you and your family will like. Um, you can quickly learn to make your own hamburger helper um, by combining hamburger spices off of your shelf, some either pasta or rice or potatoes, and not um, buy the packaged hamburger helper that's very high in sodium. So you can just use your creativity. Night before last, we made a skillet kind of um, hamburger macaroni with some Italian seasoning. So it was kind of like spaghetti with um, macaroni. I cooked the macaroni directly in the skillet once I added the tomatoes and tomato sauce. So it only dirtied one um, pan rather than two or three. So the other things you can cook would be like just regular goulash. Um, growing up, our family called that goop, which was macaroni, hamburger, tomatoes, tomato sauce. You could do things like a skillet tuna casserole. So you can use chicken, other fish. You can use vegetables. So the sky is the limit as far as skillet meals. We will be posting a um, kind of a create a skillet meal bulletin that gives you lots and lots of ideas. It's from Utah State Extension. So it kind of gives you a guideline as to where to start and then kind of go from there. But the electric skillet pr cooks pretty quickly. And we should have started timing how long it would take from start to finish. So while it's browning a little, we'll get our other ingredients ready. Um, this calls for a can of um, baked beans. And um, this is the can I had at home today. And for our purposes, um, we are not endorsing any brand over the other. It's um, these are for educational purposes only, so don't feel like you have to use this brand of baked beans. As we talked in the um, class yesterday, 
You, a lot of these ingredients you can purchase ahead of time when they're on sale at your local grocery store and have them available in your pantry for um, when, when a night arrives you need to use some um, pantry staples. You can also mix and match um, or alter this recipe. Originally calls for one can of corn, and I did not have a can of corn. So frozen corn works just as well. If you, um, so if you don't have canned vegetables, you can use frozen vegetables in their place. I know through all this um, COVID-19, we've all learned to be really good um, substituters of ingredients because you go to the grocery store and you have your grocery list made for the week. And lo and behold, that week, they don't have what's on your grocery list. So you soon learn to substitute and what, what is a good substitution for lots of things. Canned vegetables have been very sparse in our grocery store for now two or three months. So we've, we've learned to do other things. This beef is um, homegrown, so the fat content is um, pretty low. So if that's a concern, when you buy your meat, try to buy um, a higher percent um, meat and a lower percent of fat. I think it comes in like, our store you can get it in like a 93% to a 7% fat. And that really cuts down on the calories. This would also work really well with um, wild hamburger, wild game hamburger deer, elk. So if you have that, and it's soon to be hunting season, so several people may be headed out here in about a month to, to go hunt. These skillet meals are a great way to use up some of that um, wild game hamburger. Okay, so our hamburger is browned. And once again, as we talked about the other day, you don't wanna brown it to the point that it's just dried out. You want it just nicely browned, no pink left in it. And this, the little amount of fat it has, um, we won't even drain it. If you're using hamburger from the grocery store, you may want to drain off that extra grease or else it makes your meal pretty greasy. Okay, so our next ingredient, we are just adding the entire can of baked beans. And again, baked beans come in a huge array of flavors. So pick out your favorite, whether this one is country style with bacon and brown sugar. So you can't hardly go wrong with brown sugar. Um, but if you like the maple syrup flavor, um, whatever flavor, I'm gonna turn down the skillet a little. Okay, now we're ready to add our corn. Maybe. And I should have brought some scissors over, but we'll get it. Okay, so being that we have the liquid from the baked beans, that will be enough liquid to um, cook our frozen corn. Then we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of barbecue sauce. And again, any flavor of barbecue sauce you like. The other thing we could have done with this um, meal is if you'd like to have added 
um, onions while you were um, browning your hamburger. Maybe some green pepper, you could have done that. So we have our quarter cup of barbecue sauce. We will have two tablespoons of just regular ketchup. Make sure you shake it up good because it always kind of separates out, so you don't want the real watery, you want the thick, meaty ketchup. And a tablespoon of prepared mustard. I think this would be a fun recipe to serve like if um, you had a tailgate party. Unfortunately, this year, I don't think there's going to be much tailgating. Um, or, you know, just a good party food because you could serve it in this skillet. And basically, you serve it with some tortilla chips and um, can top it off with some sour cream, maybe some sliced green onions. And we serve it with like a fresh fruit salad or a toss salad or like a slice of watermelon. And you would have your complete meal. You have your vegetable, you have protein, you'd have fruit with, with your salad. I'll turn this down. And you wanna um, just let it simmer for a few minutes till it's heated completely through. We will sprinkle some cheese on the top and then serve it with some sour cream. This also makes a great leftover. Um, we won't eat all of this for supper tonight, so actually it'll be for a couple meals at our house, or maybe tonight's supper and lunch tomorrow. So it does store well and heat up well, reheat well. So I think we're about, says three-fourths of a cup of um, your shredded cheese, and that could be any kind of cheese that you like. Today we're using Cheddar Jack, which is a combination of Monterey Jack and Cheddar. So it gives it a little different flavor than just plain cheddar, but you could use Anything you'd like. Then just top it with our cheese. Kind of let it melt in. And you're ready for supper. And we will be posting this recipe with the video so you can try this at home and See what your family thinks. And we'd be interested if you have a favorite skillet meal that you'd like to share with us. Um, we would love that too. So send us a copy of your recipe and we can post that on the website or the Facebook page as well. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you another day as we continue to um, help you plan quick easy and nutritious meals.